Again, I'd like to welcome everyone to our virtual graduation for the class of 2020. I'm very excited um, for, uh, for this morning's ceremony, and I'm very excited also to see our graduates face-to-face -face for our drive-through awarding of the diplomas that will happen after this online ceremony. I hope that um, we have a lot of uh, people with us from all over the country that being virtual is allowing us to have even more people with us and we'll go ahead and begin our ceremony. Um, if we were in church, as you know, we would have our um, Silicon Valley pipe and drums uh, uh, quartet come and play for us. And so we'll begin with a procession um, of the faculty into this ceremony. with the school prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O God, who created us in your image and gave us minds and hearts and souls, send your blessing upon our school. May the flame of your spirit rest upon those who learn and those who teach, that our minds may know the truth, our hearts be filled with love, and our souls be like pearls before your throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll sing this hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, and the music is provided by Miss Sompta.
hand things over to Miss Mrs. Gallus, and she has some words of welcome for you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this exciting and special day. Here at St. Matthews, our mission is to inspire through an academically challenging course of study, the intellectual curiosity, confidence, moral courage, and character that prepares students to be leaders of positive change in the world. That is a tall order. But when I look at this year's graduating class, I am confident that we are doing just that. Graduates, in your years here, you have embraced the challenge of hard work to succeed in difficult academic subjects. You have learned to connect with your teachers and to ask questions, leaning into that intellectual curiosity to study both assigned topics and also ones that have interested you outside of the formal curriculum. You have opened your heart to hear and understand a variety of perspectives. We have urged you to celebrate all people, even or perhaps especially those who are different from you. Day after day, we continue to be inspired, not only by your strong minds, but also by your kind hearts. You have encouraged each other, expressed appreciation and gratitude to your teachers and your classmates and you have engaged in a tremendous amount of service to others. This includes raising $1,826 for the Kieran Angeli project last September at Fall Festival. Great job. Despite the challenging times that unfolded this year, you have risen to the occasion and you are bearing out the promise of our mission statement. I am so proud of you. Your teachers are also so proud of you, and I'm sure that your parents and other family members are too. You are indeed growing into the leaders of positive change so desperately needed in the world today. As you go forth to new schools next year, take with you all of the lessons and the tools from your years here. Continue living into the mission of St. Matthew's every day, even though you will not be here on campus. You have what you need. So now go, my Mustang graduates. Continue your adventure. Change the world. And don't forget to come back and tell us all about it. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Gallus. We'll continue with our valedictory addresses and I'm so excited that um, we have two val valedictorians this year and so we will have two addresses and uh, we will begin with Caden's address. Good morning family, friends, current students, faculty, and staff and administration of St. Matthews and the outstanding class of 2020. Hello, my name is Caden Tu. As one of the most celebrated athletes of all time, Michael Jordan once said, sometimes things may not go your way, but the effort should be there every single night. Effort is something each of us has invested over our years at St. Matthews whether finishing a science quest or dodging explosive throws during P class. Clearly, the second semester of this year didn't go our way, but we never gave up, and neither did any members of the St. Matthews community. Together, we all continue to offer our best effort. After completing this virtual adventure, we've actually made a class of 2020. Congratulations. Some of us, have experienced a decade of memories at this school, while others have joined us for just a year. We have formed friendships and bonds that will last a lifetime, no matter where our different paths lead. In normal circumstances, I'd say to my classmates and parents, look around across the chapel. There must be at least one memory you can associate with each person sitting in the room. However, 
Since we can't see each other in the same way today, stop for a minute and picture the smiling faces of your friends and teachers. We all share memories that have made us both laugh and cry. For instance, I so vividly remember our sixth grade year together. Suddenly, we needed to learn different rotating schedules every half an hour, trying not to enter the wrong classrooms or forget a needed book. During one of the nights of our sailing trip, I remember the endless hours of playing Uno with others in our tent. That trip wove bonds between all of us and created memories we will never forget. It couldn't just be one person pulling the ropes of the sail. We relied on each other for a shelter, building a perfect tent that wouldn't blow over. We all put forth our maximum effort while moving beyond our collective comfort zone. Seventh grade was another step up when we accessed a new, exciting third floor. We realized what a milestone we had achieved. We took the next leap in our education, learning about physics on physics day with Mrs. Moore and Mrs. Vanderlook at Great America. The day was filled with activities so much that we didn't remember to fill out the physics form until 20 minutes before the day ended. Finally, eighth grade, arguably the most formative year of our lives. We had our last retreat as St. Matthew students at St. Dorothy's Rest where we came together at the roast battle on the wooden dance floor. I bet you're laughing right now thinking about the hilarious moments that may or may not be safe to repeat at graduation. In addition, we ate s'mores and explored the dark hallways of our cabin late in the evenings. At the roast course, we all realized that there are many challenges in our lives, but it's within our power to turn these into opportunities for learning. In addition, much of this year was spent on the high school applications, tests, and essays, which required an extraordinary amount of focus and commitment. I'm sure we're all glad that's over. Good thing we had the opportunity to restore our energy and enjoy chapel talks with Chaplain Amber. However, in the second semester of our final year, we faced a looming mountain. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the St. Matthews community had to reinvent our studies, traditions, and graduation ceremony. I think most of us did not expect that we would be presenting our chapel talk in our houses. Even though these traditions weren't what we expected, many of them were unique and provided joy during these difficult times. We were especially touched seeing our teachers take the time and effort to make our made extra special with their creative dancing and heartfelt posters in the Zoom video. The teachers' engaging lessons were no less than miraculous. These unprecedented moments reminded us all to continue trying our best in whichever way we can. Some of us have donated to different charities or supported frontline health workers in local hospitals. Although we have missed seeing each other in person, this adventure has proven that so long as we are determined, we are stronger after enduring this hardship. One of Robert Frost's most famous poems states, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Because of this pandemic, we have been forced to pursue an unexpected path. On this road, we have not only learned to adapt to new circumstances, but we have armed ourselves with tools we can use throughout our future. By dedicating ourselves to making the best of our middle school years, we have shown that we can transcend our own limitations. We have demonstrated that we can overcome any obstacle together. We are proud of the accomplishments our class has reached together. In the future, when we look back at this pandemic, we can say, the St. Matthews class of 2020 has flourished through a once in a generation challenge. Our success will continue to shape us in strong, independent adults. Reminiscing upon our middle school years, we want to thank all the people that made our dreams come true. The teachers have been our lifeline, fanning our flames during spirit week 
or change our emotional well-being every single day in advisory. We are grateful to you, teachers, for always encouraging us to learn. Even when we had one too many side conversations in the middle of a presentation, or more recently, one too many fake usernames in Zoom meetings. Without you all, we would not have been able to get this far and learn the foundational skills we will need to be successful, like memorizing the quadratic formula or practicing how to roast Shakespearean characters. How can you forget Mrs. Gallus's curbside wave each morning? We will always remember her kind daily greetings. We truly appreciate the childless effort that all our teachers and administrators put in making school a worthwhile adventure in learning. Most importantly, we appreciate our families for giving us the support and guidance that we have needed. Thanks for always helping us work out our problems when our heads were down. You've always been in our corner cheering us on. Without you, we could not be who we are today. All successful people have to start from somewhere. Michael Jordan started in a small backyard. For our class, we started at St. Matthew's, and there's no limit to where we can end up. Here's to choosing the path less traveled to shape ourselves in the best people we can be as we navigate the rest of our lives. St. Matthew's has given us the confidence and the skills to forge a new path, even when it leads uphill or weaves around an unexpected corner. We owe a lifetime of gratitude for our St. Matthew's education, a foundation that will forever propel us to put in the extra effort as we continue our journey to high school and beyond. I think one of the most disappointing things about uh, being in Zoom is that we can't um, we can't applaud enthusiastically in the same way. And when we're in a webinar like this, Caden can't even see all of you that are here. Um, but Caden, I am sending you my resounding applause. Um, my daughter Hazel, who's over here in the corner, is clapping for you, Caden. And I know that everyone, wherever they are, that's listening to that phenomenal speech, is sending you their applause. Congratulations on um, that beautiful address and your words of wisdom and the achievement that earned you this award. We'll continue with Ellie's address next. Good morning. First, let me begin by thanking everyone who tuned in for our graduation webinar. Even though we can't see you, we feel your excitement and support. The community at St. Matthew's Episcopal Day School is so strong that even a pandemic cannot suppress the love we feel for each other today, our graduation day. My name is Ellie Kearns and I'm a proud member of the class of 2020. I know many in this audience spend most of their day staring at a screen. So right now, I ask you to instead look away from your screen. Close your eyes if you'd like and imagine our beautiful St. Matthew's Chapel See the stained glass and smell the candles. Listen to the booming organ and the skirl of the bagpipes. Imagine we are allowed to sit right next to each other in the pews. Feel the warmth of the people beside you. See their smiles and bask in their pride. We've done it, class of 2020. We are graduating from eighth grade and heading to high school. You can open your eyes now. I joined the class of 2020 as a pre-kindergartner, so I've attended St. Matthew's for 10 of my 14 years. I have the privilege of addressing you today, and I want to use this opportunity to introduce you to each member of our class so you can better understand the personalities that comprise our family. Francesca is kind, accepting of others, and just really cool. Everyone loves to be around Francesca, especially when it's Girl Scout cookie season. Morgan is an authentic and loyal friend. She is adventurous and brave, loves fun games, and is up for anything. Walton is confident and hardworking. He is friendly to all kids in our class and is a great team player. Finn brings positive energy wherever he goes. His jokes are always spot on. Everyone loves to spend time with Finn. Have you heard the saying, last but not least? Amelie was the last student to join our class, but she is certainly not least. 
She is a creative and hilarious person who can make you laugh until you cry. Along with being fun-loving, Hannah is kind and accepts everyone completely. She inspires me to be myself and spread compassion. Claire has the greatest laugh. Claire cares for everyone, whether two-legged or four-legged. Lexi is a special friend, talented at making people feel important. During COVID, Lexi has been wonderful at keeping in touch and making you still feel connected. Che is a triple threat. He is a funny, talented, and warm person. We are very lucky to have him in our lives. If I told you to imagine happy things, you would think of Michelle. She's optimism and po positivity personified and brings a bit of sunshine with her wherever she goes. Warren is a deep thinker with a great sense of humor. His chapel talk was poignant and moving. I highly recommend you watch it later. Marissa is the definition of a loyal friend. I envy Marissa's confidence and even more her ability to make everyone feel special and valued. Shika is unforgettable. She makes an impact on everyone she is around with her bubbly personality. She's also a talented musician and poet. Brianna taught our class to be confident and to make the world a better place by supporting your friends and leading by example. She always has fun stories and jokes. Tyler prioritizes time for helping others through volunteering or just offering uplifting conversation, and he makes our class better because of it. Colton has a generous and kind soul. Colton is more than a classmate. He is like a brother to all of us. Kevin is kind in the classroom and fierce on the field. He brings his enthusiastic spirit to every class, whether in person or virtually. Lauren's power stretches across many domains. She selflessly feeds the frontliners and dominates at Taekwondo. Yamato is compassionate to his friends and family alike. He sees people for what truly matters, the goodness of their hearts. He is a pure and kind person. Cyrus is generous with his time and offers to help those who need him. He also is one of the hardest workers I know. Alex Pavate is the cherry on top of the class of 2020. Alex Pavate can make you smile at any moment of any day. He has gotten many of us all through the ups and downs of middle school. Elizabeth has a great name and strikes interesting conversations. She's the Scooby-Doo to my Shaggy. Like a great sister, Alex Precourt laughs and cries with you. She's also an accomplished athlete with a great sense of humor. Not only is Margot creative and thoughtful, she's also wise. She works incredibly hard and gives great hugs. I'm excited that I get to spend the next four years of high school with Jack. He is 10 out of 10, full of funny jokes, intelligence, and eloquence. Audra, our Ravenclaw classmate, has a dry wit. I'm grateful I was able to get closer with her in Spain because she made that trip muy divertido. Many of you can recognize Owen because he used to hold the doors open at the end of every recess. He's a true gentleman. His mints are a highlight. When Finley shows up, the party begins. He's not afraid to show his true self and brighten the days of everyone he is around. A day without Alexandra is a day without laughter. She is the spirit of our class, in or out of the Mustang costume. Tate is so smart that he does not have to work to be hilarious. There is never a dull moment when he is around. Kenny is artistic and takes great photographs. He's a good person to be around whether you want to have fun or be serious. Whether on the court or the classroom, Caden always is supporting his peers and constantly gives his best effort. And as you know, he gives great speeches. Ethan is a hard worker, a talented actor, and also a genuine person. He brings enthusiasm into everything he does and is the cause of many laughs and fond memories. If Emily happens to miss a day of school, classes will not be the same. She brings happiness wherever she goes and puts smiles on everyone's faces. Ashley showcases beauty in her art and in how she treats others. She is a great listener and a benevolent muffin maker. Ladies and gentlemen, these are my siblings, the class of 2020. 
I will pause now for you to acknowledge them with applause or a hug if you're lucky enough to be in a room with one of them. I also want to acknowledge and appreciate our families, our teachers, and the staff of St. Matthew's. Though today's celebration is not taking place in the format we hoped for, the students, families, and especially the St. Matthew's teachers and staff have remained positive, nimble, and creative. I can only imagine how many extra hours our teachers have spent trying to create a memorable end to our time here at St. Matthew's. I used to worry about having a non-traditional graduation. Now I'm learning to think differently. Who knew that a virtual May Day could bring viewers to tears? Thank you for all of the work that went into celebrating us so meaningfully, both on May Day and today. There is a concept called the theory of maximum taste that is based on the idea that exposure to genius has the power to expand your consciousness. If you spend a lot of time with genius, your mind will end up bigger and broader than if you spend your time only with ordinary stuff. I believe that there is genius in being kind, being generous, being fun-loving, and being a hard worker. There is genius in the class of 2020, and I feel so fortunate to be a part of it. We have memories that can never be forgotten. We have lifted each other up, literally and figuratively. Together, we have sailed, played a million rounds of Kahoot, stayed up too late in cabins, sang songs on buses, cried, and searched for gold. What we should now realize is that the most valuable treasure is right in front of us, in our close friendships and remarkable memories. Class of 2020, thank you for everything. Although we have spent the last few months learning over a screen in rooms other than classrooms, I still feel your joy through my Chromebook and I hear your muted laughs. I would not have wanted to spend the last 10 years of my life anywhere else with any other people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellie. What a beautiful, beautiful, heartfelt talk. I'm having trouble finding the mouse on my computer to move us forward. Let's see. There, maybe that will do it. Congratulations, Ellie, and thank you for those beautiful words. And now we're going to sing Joyful, Joyful. And oh, I should pause just as we paused and applauded remotely for Ellie. I mean, for Caden, let's make sure we're doing that for Ellie. I love Ellie, how you said you could hear your classmates laughter when they're muted. And I hope you can hear our muted applause um, from all over for those very heartfelt words and the, the earnest appreciation of everyone in your class, um, which feels very true to me as someone who has the pleasure of knowing all of you. We'll continue with singing Joyful, Joyful. Next, we have 
Ms. Carlton's graduation address. She filmed it earlier with Mr. Robinson in the church, so you'll get to see her there. And I know she was a little bit nervous about this honor of giving the speech. I don't know how it feels um, when you're, uh, if you feel nervous in the same way once it's recorded and you know it's about to be played. So I'll have to ask you about that in, uh, later on when I see you, Ms. Carlton. Here we go. Good morning, St. Matthews. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, driving the dark of doubt away. That Little Ditty by Beethoven is a song I used to play with my dad on the piano as I was first learning to play. We would race to get through it side by side, always seeming to finish at the same time. It's one of my favorite memories of my dad, something I plan to keep on creating when I move home to Minnesota this summer. And while Beethoven wouldn't probably love it, I cherish it. When I gave my first chapel talk back in the fall, I made light of two things. The fact that I had never spoken from the pulpit and the challenge of the Bible verse Chaplain Amber had given me. I now find myself in the pulpit for the third time in front of an empty church, giving in a commencement speech in a virtual graduation scenario with all of us logging what I think is day 78 of shelter in place. Talk about pressure. As FDR once said, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. We are graduating some very skilled sailors at this ceremony. We are all making history. And the spirit of the St. Matthew's community is driving the dark of doubt away. I will be honest and say that I faltered once upon accepting the invitation from Miss Gallus to talk today. While I was incredibly honored to be chosen as the commencement speaker, I was not sure I was a big enough deal to make this event extra special for our graduates. Throughout my years, I have heard many commencement speeches, including those at my own three graduations. And truth be told, I don't remember much about them or even who gave them. To me, the most meaningful and memorable commencement speech ever was delivered by Admiral William McRaven, it's now known as the make your bed speech. I could have just pasted my face on his and had him give the speech. But I believe that that is called stolen valor and it is quite illegal to impersonate a military officer. Therefore, being the rule follower that I am, you are getting me. But if you haven't seen or read the make your bed speech, I strongly encourage you to do so. Class of 2020, Upon reflection, a concept I know you practiced at St. Matthew's, I realize there is something for me to share with you even more valuable than the 10 things Admiral McRaven mentioned. Sitting in this church or at my dining room table since we shifted to distance learning, I have heard some of the best life lessons and words of wisdom shared directly from you in your beautiful chapel talks. One of you even asked us directly in one chapel talk, what has St. Matthew's done to shape you? Finn, I'm going to attempt to answer that loaded question. Here are some of the highlights I plan to take with me as I leave St. Matthew's, and I hope all of you, class of 2020, will grab onto a few yourself as you start your new adventure. As you go forth in the world, Jack pointed out that we crave companionship of those who care about us. He is not wrong. And Lexi said that might even be in the form of our pets. You will seek to find new companions in high school and beyond. It most likely will be scary, and both Morgan and Ashley told us that fear can be very powerful. You will need to step out of your comfort zone and ride that roller coaster. See what you can learn about yourself along the way. In fact, Claire said, don't be afraid to share the wonderful selves that you are. Be the true friend, the real friend, the good friend. Find your companions. Alex Pavate agrees and encourages you to be proud of who you are. Use the words from Lauren and be the authors of your own lives. Know what you want, trust you can do it, and go for it, no matter how impossible it may seem. In doing so, you will develop what Margot called a soldier's heart, for this will not always be easy, and from these hardships will come great growth. Of course, there are some things to keep in mind along this path of growth. As Kenny so eloquently stated, there is no switch that gets flipped and poof, you're ready. You are never done growing or learning, even if that learning comes from the mistakes along the way. And there will be many. But as Kevin pointed out, the humility in which you handle these mistakes, and what Mrs. McMillan calls growing moments, will make all the difference. 
Ethan stated even a small action, a small adjustment, can have a huge effect and get you going again. Persevere, but do so with compassion, are Caden's wise words. That has never been so important in the world as right now. Be kind. If you find yourself in conflict, and there will be conflict, remember that Francesca said to fight fair, stay calm, and work together to find a solution. Michelle wisely stated that words are powerful, and the more power you have, the more important it is to use those words wisely. Be aware. Hannah encourages us to seek perspective, say only what will be helpful, which in some cases means saying nothing at all. As Cyrus reminds us most times, kindness is truly a win-win scenario. And giving, even if that means giving in, can benefit everyone, according to Tyler. Sometimes you are not going to like what you are doing. Walton coaches us to stick with it. You may learn to love it while you are on the journey. Piano lessons became way more fun for me when I connected with my dad by playing with him. Marissa gave a courageous and very personal talk on adoption. And aside from my own connection to the topic, a key takeaway for everyone is that each person's story is different. Be open to hearing it. Know your own story and love it. Alexander Siegfried bravely stated that differences don't define us, they create us. Get to know other people's stories. Shared love is what makes families and lasting friendships. Elizabeth encourages us to cherish our families and friends. Time spent with those who matter is priceless. And as Warren pointed out, we don't know how much time there is. How will you balance your time? Govern your clock. Life will come at you fast. Know that you do have control over what you see as positive or negative. And Owen encourages us to decide how we will choose to learn from the tough moments. While you might not always be ready for some of them, it is important to be grateful. As Ellie so playfully shared, gratitude is a habit. Be as open to being the Carl as you are to receiving the Carl. No, I'm not referring to the San Francisco fog, but I am grateful for that too. Tate expanded on why change will happen, and that change is, in fact, often good. Take the risk. Yamato confidently shared the value of changing what you can and work with what you cannot change. Don't get irritated, embrace it, and move forward. Play your personal game of Tetris with an attitude of acceptance. Alex Precourt warned those unexpected moments can be uncomfortable, but let go of the expectations and change your mindset. Ending our time at St. Matthew's this way was not what any of us had in mind but it was beyond our control. And what if we shifted our thinking a little and saw it almost as a gift, a way of weaning us from this community as we prepare for our next? We weren't on campus, but we were here. In wise words beyond her age, Brianna reminds us that life is short. Experience it through your own eyes. There is a time for every purpose. This includes a time for hard work. Colton suggests putting in the effort first and reward yourself with the free time when your work is complete. Not bad advice. Emily told us not to lose our joy of learning by stressing too much over the grade or the expectation of an outcome. And that will come up more than a few times in your next few years. Put in the effort, enjoy the journey, seek the adventure, and then reap the rewards. I agree 100% with Sheikha when she says, it is okay not to know who you are, yet. Or what you want to do with your life, yet. Ms. Carr was onto something when she taught you to add that little word to your sentences. It is your values and character that grew and developed during your time at St. Matthew's that define you, not your grades or awards. Seek your own calling. Find your soul moment. There is no due date for this, by the way, and you might have more than one of these soul moments. So, again, be aware. Amelie introduced the word pivot this spring, something we all had to do when we shifted to shelter-in-place orders. Sometimes in life, we do need to pivot and make that change, even if it means living, leaving behind things and people we cherish. 
Currently, you are all pivoting to align yourselves with the adventures and the challenges of high school. Personally, I happen to be pivoting and moving to Minnesota. Amelie advised us to put on a brave face and trust yourselves. This is all going to be good. Audra said that love is the most powerful force in the universe, yet to describe it is like trying to hold an entire bucket of water in your hands. It seems overwhelmingly impossible. But that love it is what draw, is drawing me back to my roots in Minnesota, and it is the same love that is supporting you and pushing you onto your next school experience. We may have procrastinated admitting that this day would come, and as Finley mentioned, procrastination sometimes happens because we think we have something better to do. But more likely, we procrastinate because we are scared about what we are supposed to do, and we might not know how to do it. Remember Claire's wise words, fear is a natural part of life, but we can't allow it to hold us back. Be aware of Finley's shoulder cheerleader angel lovingly egging you on, for that angel's love is far more powerful than the other negative guy telling you that you can't or shouldn't try something. Che was spot on when he encouraged us to know that we fit in, trust that we do belong, we do matter, and we are not alone. This was highlighted in our recent May Day celebration when the entire community came together in a new way to honor and celebrate you, our eighth graders, in one of the most treasured rituals at St. Matthew's. Having students and faculty members trusting that their singular contributions and dance moves, as uncomfortable as they may have been to make, were all part of vital parts of a larger community whole was magical. That is what I want you to remember and take with you more than anything else. For the time you were at St. Matthew's, whether it was one year or 21 years like me, we were part of something incredible. We lived and learned in the special sauce. It is in our souls and fills every fiber of our being. And no graduation, relocation, or virus will ever take that away from us. And that, Finn, is my answer to how St. Matthew's has shaped us. Oh, and yes, Canadians are nice. But the Minnesota nice is not just an urban legend. Maybe it has something to do with the proximity of the borders. Who knows? Class of 2020, we leave this space filled with the spirit of St. Matthew's, now and forever. Amen. When Ms. Carlton um, shared her talk with me, I read it standing outside of a taco truck, and I was crying and crying on the sidewalk. Um, so I got a preview, which is probably sparing me from crying right this moment, but it is more powerful to hear you say it, Dawn. Thank you for those beautiful words. Um, we are really going to miss you. One of my favorite roles that I have in the graduation every year is to announce the names of students as they receive their diploma. This year, we're still going to announce everyone's name. We have a slide for each one of you with your photo. And I apologize that we didn't get to practice names. So if I mispronounce your middle name or something like that, I'm very sorry. Um, I'm doing my best. And, uh, and so now I present to you the class of 2020. On each of these slides, you'll see a little surprise message from your parents, your family. Francesca Ciora Arbeles. Morgan Marston Buckley. Walton Travis Chung. Finley Joseph Colson. Amelie Del Porto. Hannah Claire Dahl. Claire Bailey Felton. Alexis Claire Fenton. Michelle Guzman.
Che Yasin Harmon. Warren Chow. Elizabeth Michelle Kearns. Marissa Hope Kelly. Shika Devika Kinney. Tyler Lal. Colton James Lum. Kevin Ryan Macy. Lauren Matsuda. Brianna McKay. Yamato Onozato. Cyrus Patel. Alex Arjun Pavate. Elizabeth Catalina Powell. Alexandra Lucia Precourt. Marguerite Adair Robison. John Andrew Roche. Audra Rogers. Owen Alexander Sam. Finley Scott. Alexandra Marie Siegfried. William Alec Stephen Schneider. Kenneth Cooper Straussberg. Kaden Junji Tu. Ethan M. Weinshell. Emily Claire Winters. Ashley Jane Wong. Let's pause there and we can use the um, applauding, the clapping emoji <laughs> that Ashley's parents included in her message to remember that everyone is applauding for you class of 2020. Mrs. Gallus is going to take over for a minute. 
It's wonderful to see all of those smiling faces in those pictures and to know that you are at home with your families also smiling and being surrounded by their love. We wanted to honor a particularly a few families today who are legacy families. This means that their child or children have been at St. Matthew's from the very beginning, from pre-kindergarten all the way through to eighth grade. That's 10 years of St. Matthew's Episcopal Day School love and formation, as Ms. Carlton just mentioned in her talk. These are the children of the families who are graduating out. There are other students in the class who have been at St. Matthew's the full time, but they have younger siblings and their family is still with us for a number of years. But these four families, after many years, are graduating with their eighth grader and moving on from St. Matthew's. So today we particularly celebrate Hannah Dahl and her family. Hannah is the last of four in her family and the last of eight in a collection of cousins. And a particular shout out to grandparents Dixon and Carol Dahl. With eight of your grandchildren at St. Matthew's, you truly have been pillars of our community and have sh helped shape who we are as an institution. So thank you. Ellie Kearns is the last of four from the Kern family, and we celebrate her and the Kearns as they are graduating together today. Sheikha Kinney has also been at the school since pre-K, and so after 10 years, we sadly say goodbye to the Kinney family as well. And finally, Kenny Strasberg has also completed 10 years. And along with his older brother earlier, we wish the whole Strasburg family a fond farewell as they graduate as well. Now we know that for graduates and families graduating, you don't really leave St. Matthews. You will always be a part of our community and you are always welcome to return. Congratulations to all of you and thank you for your dedication to our school for so many years. Thank you, Mrs. Gallus. We'll continue with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll sing The King's Highway.
Father Eric has a blessing and dismissal for us. This glorious day, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, abide with you and remain with you always. Let us go in peace to love and serve all people. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The last part of our graduation ceremony this morning is a recession of the students. Each student sent in a video and you'll notice as um, as we watch the video that I put in a freeze frame in each video so we could really see the students face and the message that they had for us. So I should say the message that they have for each other. So if you notice that freezing, it's not a glitch. It's just a chance for us to make sure we can really watch everybody, uh, really see everybody.
That concludes our virtual graduation ceremony, um, but we will continue face-to-face -face at school starting at 11 a.m. So in about 55 minutes, our first round of students will come through and we really look forward to seeing you there.